Glory to the Lord Jesus, a wonderful saviour and friend. Okay, we're back again at the 2024, the year of the door. A prophecy uh, that came forth in um, November 23. that the Lord Jesus has opened the door wide or he's making it very clear this year. Specifically, that um, if the people are willing to come through the door, he will uh, help them. In the time uh, that we're in, it's a it's a time of crisis, isn't it? Not just in Australia, but worldwide. So much happening. Uh, natural disasters, spiritual disasters, religious disasters. Uh, governmental disasters. So this is part 48. Today we'll be reading out of Paul's writing to Timothy, 1 Timothy 4. And we're going to start in verse 1. Which says, now the Spirit expressly says that in the last days or times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits, doctrines of demons, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good. Nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. I'll leave it there for now. If we need any more, we'll read on later on. So, now the Spirit expressly says, in the latter times, some will depart from the faint. Um, that's very clear, isn't it? Many are. Many have and many are. we look back when this was written the exact date I don't know but uh, I believe we're um, well and truly in the last days in the last times And in the last times, uh, there will not be an adding to the church as it was in the beginning. There will be a, a departing, given the conditions of the world and the love of 
but many will grow cold. And they'll give heed to deceiving spirits. Right? And that will be because deceiving spirits uh, like to um, to present to us the idea that we're going to get what we want. Just like Eve. The serpent. Somehow, as Paul said, deceived Eve. <laughs> he was telling her what she wanted to hear. That's what deceiving spirits do. They tell you what you want to hear. Deceiving churches. They tell you what you want to hear. Whereas the Lord Jesus doesn't tell you what you want to hear. The Lord Jesus tells you what you need to hear. And those he shepherd uh, uh, Christ ordained fellowship, they tell you what you need to hear. They're not looking to become famous. They're not looking for the praises of men or women or the acceptance of men or women. They're calling it the way it is. And that has always only made for a, a holy remnant. But they give this, they give heed. They give heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, teachings, right? orchestrated by devilish spirits. We've got plenty of that round. Right? Demonic denominations. Plenty of that round. It's no big deal. It's uh, demonic denominations and devilish doctrines. Deceiving doctrines. Nothing out of the usual, is it? It's just like anti. That's all it is. It's just anti truth, anti Christ. Uh, anti. Um, anti Jesus as preeminent. All. Uh, Devil powered. That's all the devil did. That's all Satan did. He, he spoke contrary to Jesus and he wanted to run the show. He wanted to um, make Jesus, and still does, make, wants to make Jesus look bad. Hey? Eh? makes the truth uh, to be unreachable. Uh, um, make the word of God like an unrealistic aim. It just can't be done. You just can't do that. You know. Only, only God can do that. Only Jesus can do that. You're only human. Well, that's true. That's true. We're only, we are. We are human. 
But the big plus is we have, uh, as if we do, have the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, indwelling, empowered, empowered by the ghost of the governor. He who governs all things. And we know that scripture, don't we? We know that scripture's in Colossians. And we've been having a bit of a look at Colossians lately, haven't we? I'll just go over here. Do, 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 do. Here we are. Colossians. Yeah. So we go over to Colossians. And uh, we go to Colossians 2. And the verse is 8. Beware, lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of man, according to the basic principles of the world, not according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him, who is the head of all principality and power. So, As I just said, the ghost of the governor. Well, here he is in verse 9, the governor. He governs all things. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. See that? So there is a Godhead. And we're complete in him who is the head, the governor of all principality and power. Don't you like that? We've got the upper hand because we have the governing ghost, the, the Holy Spirit indwelling. And uh, he quickens us to error, He guides us into all truth. He says, hey, no, that's, that's, that's not true. That's error. This is for those inside the door. This is for those in Christ who walk not in the flesh but in the spirit. And you pick it up straight away. Pick up the the deception and the um, devilish doctrines. Eh? There was that that first devilish doctrine uh, that the servant gave Eve: "You will not die. Eh? You will not die. You will not surely die. Your relationship." Will stay intact even though you uh, practice lawlessness. Everything will be fine. Don't, don't bother yourself. <laughs> what do you think of that? No, no. I praise, I praise Father, I think. Father, for the Word. Without the Word, you know, we're shipwrecked, aren't we? We don't know who to believe. But because we have the Word, we, we can believe Jesus. That's who I believe. And that's what... Uh, the year of the door 
is all about. That's what the year of the door um, is speaking about. Believing Jesus. 2024, the year of believing Jesus. Giving preference to Jesus. Right. Once again, you got Colossians 1 18. Giving Jesus the preeminence. Giving heed. The Spirit expressly says. This is express. This is not the red mailbox at the post office. This is the yellow one. <laughs> it's going express. This is very important. The Spirit expressly says, That in latter times, some of the path and the faith, and this is why uh, some depart from the faith, others depart from for other reasons, but some give heed to deceiving spirits and other doctrines. Okay, other doctrines. And we're clear about that. <coughs> we mentioned that on Sunday, didn't we? We mentioned that on Sunday about the other doctrines and the other Jesus. Right. Let's just go over to um, two Corinthians. Can we go there? Over the two Corinthians. And um but I have a look. Have a look there. Let's see if we can find something in two Corinthians eleven that I'm looking for. Uh, 2 Corinthians 11, 3. But I fear least somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. What do you think of that? Simplicity. Keeping it simple. You know? Keep it simple. Fish and chips, you know. Uh, cod, can and chips. <laughs> Keep it simple. But the world and the, the, the churches and the one world church, is a, she's a big mama. The One World Church is a big mama. And, uh, well, the One World Government, it's a big daddy. To, um, to go with the big mama. See? And so, um, one world church, whoa. She's a mix, uh, mixed brew, that one. And so, uh, you come with the appearance of godliness and deny the ghost of the governor. Right? They deny the Holy Ghost. You know what I mean? They, they deny the gov, they do. No good. 
end up the saved. And all the outward um, embellishments of religion. It all, it all looks good to the eye, but when you have a dig around, they've just complicated things. It's just all... Uh, well, put it this way. Man's put his, men and women have put their grubby hands, grubby, adamic hands all over the message. You know? <laughs> Like you ever cleaned a car or, or a motorcycle and you polish it and then someone comes along with their grubby hands and they oh, this is nice, isn't it? Oh, smudgy. Oh, this is, you've done a good job here. Here, let me maul it. Well, that's what people have done to the doctrine of Jesus. The simplicity is gone. Simplicity is gone. I brought in all this Bible college and certificates for this and certificates for that and a course for this and a course for that. And Santy, Santy season Santa Claus and um, rabbit seasons no more um, dying daily no, no more uh, submitting our lives totally to the Lord. Uh, just some roughshod concoction of various religions of men. And Paul says in 2 Corinthians 11, 3, but I fear at least somehow the servant deceived Eve by his craftiness. See, minds may, minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he who comes preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive a different spirit, which you have not received, different gospel you have not accepted you may well put up with it boy oh boy okay. so that's very that's pretty heavy that's pretty weighty stuff isn't it another Jesus a different spirit and a different gospel well, you can talk to some people, or maybe many people, in churches today, take your pick, and they wouldn't even have a clue that there's another Jesus. Or another spirit, or another gospel forward slash doctrine. But there is. <laughs> there is. That's why Jesus wants us to come through the door, come through him. Huh? Well, I'll just go over to uh, I'm going to go over to John for a minute. See what we got there. John. Big bad John. Every morning at the mine they would stand in line. He was six foot six, like two forty five, broad at the shoulders, 
there at the hills, and everybody knew not to give any lip to Big John. Big John, Big John, Big Bad John. So when we look at John 10, we see there uh, in verse 1, Most assuredly I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, He's no better than a thief and a robber. See? There is no other way. But we do... We do have... Those... Uh, who say there is a, there are other ways. Mother Teresa... Was said to have said that. Not just said, but it's in her book. And that's a dead giveaway, isn't it? It's in her book. And then uh, you have the likes of um, Billy Graham and uh, his hero, Billy Graham, his, uh, his friend, Norman Vincent Peale. Right. He was the positive thinker. Just New Age, you know, New Age did. The Mr. Positive Thinker. Norman Vincent Peale. Right. He he was a uh, played a big part in Kenneth Hagen's doctrine. Kenneth Hagin's doctrine was was not Jesus' doctrine. Simple as that. He drifted off. He he was taken by deceiving spirits. Hey. Same with William uh, Brenham. Now, strange and miraculous things happened with that man, and he was an Irishman. They say. He was raised up in a, a log cabin, apparently. He was very poor. But, uh, yeah, he came out with some ridiculous things, you know. He had an angel that was uh, leading him. And that's not correct, is it? It should be the Holy Spirit, not an angel. Um, he believed that the serpent had intercourse with Eve. <laughs> yeah, I think that was it. And uh, all sorts of crazy things. He went right off the deep end, but he was popular. See, people become very popular when when they see miracles. People see uh, miracles happening, signs and wonders. They get very excited, and the devil has perfect opportunity to deceive. Well, not to go by signs, wonders, and miracles, because in the last days they'll come with the the powers of darkness will come with lying signs and wonders, whereas we see in the scriptures, Thessalonians. Yeah. And so uh, in John ten with the door. Um, John ten two, but he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him. 
for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of the strangers. Eh? <laughs> well, that's a good idea, isn't it? To flee. That's what I, I've, I've done uh, and initially done when I came to the Lord. I heard these uh, voices of these so-called pastors. I said, no, nah, I can't follow that. I can't go for that. Oh, no, who I no can do. I can't go for that. No, no, I... It didn't hit the spot. <laughs> didn't hit the spot. I just had to move on, you know. When I heard something, no, no, that's not right. That's been tweaked. That's not pure doctrine of Christ. They've added to that or they've taken away from that, one or the other. When you get that, you've got problems. You know, they want to go back into the historical events of, you know, the macadamia nuts or the Maccabees or the Dead Sea Scrolls or all this, like... Uh, intellect of men, solic, systematic, um, uh, knowledge, but not revelation knowledge <laughs> at all. It, it's far away from the simplicity of the Christ, eh? delving into things they do not really know are condoned by Jesus. Oh, there's other books, you know, Paul. They've said to me, I don't know how many have said that to me over the decades. There's other books, you know, and you really need to, to read them because that's why you're so ignorant. <laughs> I think I'll stay un uneducated and untrained and just stick with Jesus. Eh? Oh, there's other books. I had to just cut a bloke off who said that. He used to say hello to me, and I said hello. I gave him some literature, he read it, and I could see he didn't like it. Too simple, too straight, and uh, too demanding. Simple as that. And that's Jesus' doctrine. Oh, this is too hard. We're going back. Anyway, we got down the road, so to speak. And I see this uh, chappy as I go and have my tea in the morning. And uh, he started to come to me with this rubbish about these other books. Oh, and there's the book of e Enoch and the book of um, Eli and the book of this and the book of that. And I said, look, mate, I'm not interested. I only read one book and I only take one pill and that's the gospel <laughs> of Jesus, not of Eli or anyone else. Okay. The book that I read doesn't mention the book of Eli. It doesn't mention the book of Wongi Bungi or anyone else. So I don't bother myself with it. Because it'll just lead me away from the simplicity in Christ. And the devil can have his way. No, thank you. You, you can have that. So when I see him and he says, oh, how are you? I don't bother. I don't bother even greeting him because I don't want to partake of his evil. 2 John 9 to 11. Because he comes with another doctrine. And the devil's using him to try and deceive me <laughs> and everyone else that he talks to. 
but it just don't work with me. Simple as that. They come with this other garbage and they've added to the word and taken away from the word. They've added Santy to the word. They've added Christmas to the word. They've added Easter to the word. <coughs> Days, months, seasons, the beggarly uh, attitude, they're still there in the beggarly. That's Galatians 4, 8 to 10 says. They're still bogged down, or would that be 8 to 11? still bogged down in the ways of men, philosophies, traditions of men, cultures of men. I, I was only told um, the other day that a particular, I don't know if they all know, Seven Day Adventist church, they have the Aboriginal people go in there and teach them of their um, culture and traditions and that. Could you believe that? Unbelievable, isn't it? Taking that on. It's contrary to the doctrine of Jesus. And people do that. They mix it in. Because if you don't accept culture and traditions of men today, yeah, you're a marked man. You're, you're, you're marked out as a um, troublemaker or a uh, antisocial or even maybe they call you antichrist, I don't know. But it wasn't in the scriptures. We just read it before, didn't we? We read it before. Uh, about uh, culture and traditions and philosophy. I'll just go back there. Where it says um, very clearly Colossians 2. Verse 8, beware, lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty the seat according to the traditions of men, basic principles of the world, not according to Christ. See? Philosophy. Philosophy. Traditions, cultures, the whole lot. It it just it stains the word. It leaves smudge marks. We don't want it. We don't have it. We don't accept that. And therefore, that uh, ostracizes you, doesn't it? It it pushes you out there. Well, I don't mind being outside the gate without the camp. Hebrews 13, 13. I don't mind that. Suffering the reproach of Christ. I've had it for 37 and a half years. <laughs> Another 37 and a half years won't matter. Hey? What a beautiful, wonderful place to be inside the door in Christ, in the Spirit, where there's no condemnation. And people can say what they like. They can bang on, call you this, call you that. It don't matter. It, there's no condemnation. You, no one can condemn you. Whether it be the serpent, whether it be a child of the devil right? or someone being used of the devil. There's no condemnation. Right? So um, it's 
2024, the year of the door. Right? You might want to keep it simple, stupid. K I double S. We don't want to get involved with all this uh, extra biblical blab. It's not worth a dollar. It's of no use. It's of no use to you or anyone else. Right? <laughs> Corinthians 11 3, but I fear at least somehow as a servant deceived the advice crafting. It's very crafty. And we are told by the Lord to put our craftiness away, not handling the Word of God deceitfully. We're told to put that away. So your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity which is in Christ, that is in Christ. For in if he who comes preaches another Jesus, and then we've got the different doctrine and different gospel. Things are worse than ever. Okay? And people don't like you talking about uh, these things. They say, oh, you're divisive. You can't go judging people. You're the only one that's right. No, I, I, I'm just jealous for them. I'm jealous for these poor souls that are being hoodwinked by the Norm Vincent Peale teachings, the Hagen teachings, Rima teachings, blab it, grab it, name it, claim it. <laughs> you can have what you want, you just got to believe. Could you imagine if that was true? The world would be a total nut house. If you, you can uh, name it, claim it, play it, grab it, whatever you want, you have. You just got to believe, just be positive. Once again, the word positive is not in the scriptures or negative. So they're not speaking as the oracles of God to start with. That's to start with, before you even examine what they're saying. Huh? No, it's, it's the word, it's the basic, beautiful, pure scripture, word of God. It sets us free. Hey? We take heed to ourselves in the doctrine of Jesus. We will save ourselves and those who will hear. Glory to the Lamb. Eh? So they've complicated it all with their little seasons and this and that. Dragging, you know, we're dragging stuff over into the New Testament, like the tithing. You've got to give 10%. No, there's no more priests. There's no more priests. You don't need a tithe. And then we go straight to Father through Jesus. Oh, we've got to pay our tithe, what, of coming and in us? <laughs> Herbs and spices. Oh, you can't eat this, you can't eat that. You know? That's seven day Adventist too. You can't eat shellfish or whatever. And the, I think the Jews are the same. You can't eat this sort of food or you can't eat that sort of food. Right? Isn't that what we're reading today? You're not allowed to eat this or you're not allowed to eat that. 1 Timothy 4. Verse 2. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. <coughs> having their own conscience. Seared with a hot iron. Hypocrites and liars. 
Shemaim, and their own conscience is seared with the hot irons of hell. Eh? A hypocrite is someone who says but does not do. Speaking lies. Liars. <laughs> Pants are on fire. Eh? Boy, the people that I come across in the last 37 years that think nothing, they do not think a thing about telling pork pies. Eh? They just lie for the sake of lying. They don't even know the, the extent of the severity of lying. They have no idea. Because eh? they're not taught by the Lord. Only Jesus teaches you how bad lying is. Know that. That's what Jesus teaches. But the world, the world teaches that everyone lies. Right? Everyone lies. That's what they say. I got over here to the writings of um, John. Yeah. And I'm going to read in John eight forty four. You are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and does not stand in the truth, because there's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar, and the father of it. <laughs> but because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. See? He's a liar. The devil is a liar. If I would, if someone asked me, what word would I use for the devil? What would be the the most uh, explanatory word I would use for the devil, I would just say liar. So, when people lie, they're just behaving like children of the devil, aren't they? Huh? Well, when people are children of God, they speak the truth, come what may. And to death, they'll speak the truth, no matter what. But a liar is no better than the child of the devil. Eh? As it says in John 8, forty-four, you're of your father, the devil. But we know that Francis, Pope Francis, the talking mule, he says that the devil doesn't have children. That's a total contradiction, isn't it? He, he, he comes against the word of God. Because John 8, 44 says, the devil does have children. Because these Pharisees banging on 
that they were the children of God and the seed of Abraham. And Jesus said, what are you trying to kill me for? What are you doing me bad for? You reckon you're of uh, father? You reckon you're of uh, my father? Why are you doing that? You reckon you're of the seed of Abraham and you want to do me wrong? You have your father the devil. Simple as that. That is the greatest litmus test there is. If you just speak the truth, the way it is, you'll find out who is who in the zoo. <laughs> you will find out. You don't have to do anything. That's the beauty of the word. It's the word. As Jesus said, the words I speak judge you, not me. The words I speak judge you. Okay. Love that word of God, powerful, for the ringing down of strongholds in high places. Eh? 1 Timothy 4, in the verse is, forbidding to marry, conscience is seared with hot irons, yeah, liars and hypocrites. Yeah, on the outside, very nice, you know, it could be the, could be Mormon, you know, the nice snowy white and the little badge on and it might be the Jehovah Witnesses, you know, in their frilly dresses and their long hair, tied up in a bun, you know, their print dress down to their ankles. Some little girl or boy standing next to them looking very innocent, you know, knocking at the door. I don't bother anymore. I just sort of like open the door just so that you can, there's just a crack in the door and I, oh no, you know. Don't even greet such people. 2 John 9 to 11. Don't even greet them. And they come with another doctrine. Don't greet them. Oh, no, we can't do that. We've got to be inclusive. <laughs> well, you can include the devil. It's up to you. And doctrines of devils. Deceiving spirits. As I've said before and I'll say it again, if you want to have a decent look at the Jehovah Witnesses worldwide, don't ask me. Go to the internet and have a look at Silent Lamb. Silentlambs.org S-I-L-E-N-T L-A-M-B-S dot O-R-G and you see the track record of these people it's horrendous it's disgusting go and have a look renowned pedophiles abusers frauds liars Totally disgusting. That's not me. Don't, don't, don't dump that on me. That's what the site's all about. Documented accounts. Documented accounts that they've never been held accountable for. Always slipping through the courts somehow. Doctrines of demons, deceiving spirits, speaking lies in hypocrisy. 
consciences, seared with the hot irons of hell. And then we go on to verse 3, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. Doesn't matter what the food is. As long as there's thanksgiving, or that would be, a, you know, how we pray. Let's pray. And then we do the thanksgiving, don't we? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you for this food. To bless it, sanctify our bodies in Jesus' name. Hey, eh? Thanksgiving. We're thanking the Lord for the food. Foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. Eh? And we know the case of Peter, don't we? And the white sheet came down from out of heaven, so to speak, and all the animals in there, oh, of all kinds. And the Lord said to Peter, kill and eat, didn't he? <laughs> kill and eat, whatever you want. <laughs> <coughs> but you got different religions. They say, oh, no, you can't eat this, you can't eat that. You have to be vegetarian. You, you can't eat meat on Friday. Um, you can't get married because you're a minister or a so-called priest, which there is none. And he's a priest in the spirit. And kings, that's what we are. Revelation 1 6. God has made us kings and priests unto, unto God uh, through the blood of Jesus. Okay? But there's no priesthood, as in natural, earthly priesthood. And they're telling them, oh, you can't marry, can't get married. But even if there were priests, they can get married because. Aaron got married. He was a high priest, wasn't he? He had sons. Did they? Nadab and Abihu, were they? Something like that. Hey. And uh, all these rules and regulations of men, philosophy and traditions, cultures, they all render the word of God void. The Lord don't like them. Hey? That's why he said in 2 John 9 to 11, if anyone comes with any other doctrine, don't even greet them. I mean, that's heavy. That's a heavy. Don't shake their hand. Don't greet them. That's if they're coming to teach you. Hey? Or they think they're going <laughs> to. Just ignore them. Turn your back on them. Eh? Turn your back on them. Just like those in Timothy. Uh, yeah, 2 Timothy, wasn't it? 2 Timothy 3. That's another last days. Perilous time, people. Timothy 3, 1 to uh, 5. Uh, lovers of uh, themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, with self without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, Haughty lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. Do they deny the Holy Spirit? They deny the 
word of God. That's the power in it. They're forever denying and doing their own thing. And the Spirit said, no, you, you don't do see any season. They just deny it. They deny the scripture. You quote scripture, they just deny it. <laughs> oh, we're not interested, just love. We're interested in love. Yeah? What? Sex? Is that what you call in love? No. No. Sorry. A form of godliness, but deny its power. They deny the word and they deny the Holy Spirit of having his way. But they, they, they look religious, don't they, so to speak. They look godly, but they're not, because they've got their snowy whites on. You know, like Mr. Um, Quibbaloy in the Philippines. He has that property. He's got hundreds of thousands of followers. Filipino. Apollo Quibbaloy. Yeah. They finally tracked him down and again. Again. And um, you'll probably get jail this time. What a liar he is. He reckons the property he's got, it's quite a big property, quite a, a beautiful property, but he reckons it's the new Jerusalem. Deceivers, liars, Polo Quibbaloy, big name in the Philippines. Hey? They got him for rape, rape in one of the congregations. Man of God. You're joking, aren't you? Huh? He's another Bible college boy. <laughs> huh? Raped a congregation, one of the congregations. There you have it, isn't it? Everyone wears white. See, they've got the snowies on, snowy white. Just like the Pope, Benny Hinn. They all wear white. Uh, that other African bloke, he's another sham, scammer. What's his name? O o Yokolomi. <laughs> he's another one. They work with, uh, they scam people with their pretentious healings and miracles. That's the way they get them in. Because people don't give two hoots about Jesus. They just want the miracle. They want to see miracles and healing. They don't give a rat about Jesus. He's not the theme at the end of the day. They might throw his name in there to fill a few gaps, but it's disgusting. Right? They don't love Jesus. Because, you know, if they love Jesus, they'll do what he says. Because that's what the scriptures say. That's what the scriptures say. Let me read it to you, and then you'll know... It's not my words. You get it straight from the book, straight off the page. John, we go to John, and we go to chapter 14. And we'll start reading in verse <coughs> 21. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. Look, I don't need to go any further, really but it just doubles up, triples up. John 14, 21. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. You see that? They don't teach that, they don't preach that in churches today. Because too demanding. It's not even demanding. It's just love. It's the epitome of love. 
not a, not eros or philia. This is agape, ahava in the Hebrew. This is the real love. Right? John 14, and the verse is 23. Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my father will love him. This is the second time he said that. And we, we, we. So much for, oh, there's only one God, you know. There's no, none of this Father, Son and Holy Ghost went, well, who's the we? Who's the we? And we will come to him and make our home with him. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father. So there's me and my father. Oh no, there's only God. Eh? There's only God. It's oneness. Jesus is Jesus. Jesus is the Father and Jesus is the Holy Ghost. Modalism. Hogwash. Deceiving spirits. Doctrines of devils, lies, contrary to Jesus. If anyone loves me, we're in 20, 23. Jesus has and said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word, my father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. 24. He who does not love me does not keep my word. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father. Belongs to Father. Who sent me? <laughs> eh? They deny. They deny the power. Eh? They deny the power. We got an appearance of God, Leonard. But they deny the word, they deny Jesus, they deny Father, they deny the Spirit, they deny. And they love the lie. Because they're sly. No better than a fly. Right? No better than Beelzebub, the blowfly. They don't want to tell the truth. Because eh? they know they'll lose out. They won't be able to have their little way. They won't be able to do their thing. They'll be convicted. And they get angry. And they start twisting everything and turning it round back onto you. But when you revise what they have said, whether it's email, text, or recording, and you revise it, they don't have a leg to stand on. They show themselves to be anti-Christ or anti-truth. Mockers of the doctrine of Jesus. But the Lord is so loving and gracious. He says, hey, 2024 is the year of the door. It's my year. Come to me, ye who labor and are heavily laden, and I will give you rest for your soul. My burden is light, my yoke is easy. But that is only for those who, willing, who are willing to do my word. But if you're not willing... To obey the Lord, his yoke is not light and his burden is not light, I should say. His yoke is not easy. Very hard. Just like John 6, 60. 
and 66. Oh, this is too hard. We're going back. Eh? It's too hard because I don't want to do it. The only thing that's hard in this life is something you don't want to do. <laughs> Especially if you have the power of the Holy Ghost. So, where are we? We're in 1 Timothy 4. Talking about the food, aren't we? It created everything to be eaten. Eat a lot. So oh, you can eat mar Eat. I used to eat marijuana before I come to the Lord and wash it down with green label bourbon. But I've heard uh, Christians and they are Christians, they're not followers of Jesus. Christians are not in the scriptures. The word Christian, or especially Christianity, it's not in the scriptures, but Christian is mentioned once, I think. Um, yeah, Christians just say, oh, it's okay to smoke ganja. You can smoke marijuana. You know, God created it. <laughs> no, that come with a curse. That came with the curse. Right? That's a cursed plant. And you know what it does to people, don't you? It's a mind-altering drug. In other words, you ain't going to think straight. <laughs> right? You want to have a look at people who smoke ganja, have a decent look at them, what it amounts to, if you are, call yourself a Christian, and you probably are, you go down to Nimbin. They have brethren from Jesus the Christ ministry. Brothers and sisters go down to Nimbin and minister on the street. I've got a video of it. Like wild animals. They did not want a bar of it. And they're pot smokers. Hey, don't tell me about pot. Don't tell me about ganja or grog, because I was in there before I come to Jesus. The only people I knew were people that were drunks and junkies. Chain smokers, brawlers. And not much you can tell me about that stuff. And I've seen it. I've seen people go off the deep end. Just totally different people. Just nutcases. Huh? They were good people in the eyes of man. None of us knew the Lord then, but they were just your normal, as they say, good blokes. <laughs> you know? And they ended up fruitcakes. Three of them hung themselves. How's that? Oh, no, there's nothing wrong. Nothing wrong with a bit of ganja. It's all right here. You want to have a hit? No, you can give it. I don't need that garbage. It's cursed. With the curse that came with Adam and Eve. Eh? The whole earth is cursed. We live in a curse and a um, globe. That's why we need to come through the door need to come into Jesus' way of thinking and put on the mind of Christ. Eh? What do you think of that? You've got to put on the mind of Christ. Eh? I'll just finish on Colossians 3, 1. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on the things of the earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Eh? 
when Christ, who is our life, appears, is he your life? Then you also will appear with him in glory. What do you think of that? Jesus is sitting at the right hand of Father. They say that's not, they don't believe that either. They don't believe that. Because they're anti-truth. Anti-truth is just anti-Christ. Because he is the truth. Right? You got all these people that they're off their face, they're, they're, they're bombed out, smoking pot, drunk, and they think they're going to heaven. What, is this, what did the scriptures say? What did the scriptures say? What does Jesus say? He said, the drunk guy will not enter the kingdom. Eh? I don't want to hear it. People don't want to hear it. Eh? The Spirit expressly says that in the latter days, the latter times, someone depart from the faith, giving heed to the Holy Spirit and doctrines of demons. Simple as that. Uh, and you got multiple, multiple uh, doctrines of demons. Devilish doctrines, in other words. Uh, lies. They're not the truth. And they give heed to it. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, it makes it. Oh, that sounds good. I wouldn't mind doing that. But don't ask them to do Jesus. You can ask them to do Christianity. Oh, that's not so bad. That's not hard. I do Christianity. That's a concoction. That's just a religious concoction. With all kinds of paganism and... Uh, what would you say? inclusivity of the world and wickedness. It's all in there. They throw the lot in the one bag. It's called the One World Church. All the demonised denominations selling their souls to the devil to be accepted and become one. To be appeased. That they're Conscience will be appeased. It's not the truth. The truth sets you free, and that means free. You don't need marijuana, you don't need booze, you don't need the anything of, of this world. Free. If Jesus said you're free. No longer conforming to the world. You're a non-conformist. That's me in a nutshell. A non-conformist. Full stop, period. And it's not going to change for anyone. And it won't change for death. Eh? James 14... Uh, James 4.15 If God wills, I'll live tomorrow. Simple as that. So what's all the plans about? Church ministers asked me for, for decades, what's your vision, Paul? What's your plan? Church people. Plan? What? Vision? Man, you're not in love. That's your problem. When you're in love with someone, you don't see anything else except them. There ain't no vision. There ain't no plan. There's just love. You're just happy to be with them. <laughs> huh? They don't need money. They don't need to have money or anything else. They don't need to be flavour of the month. You just love them. Well, that's me and Jesus. He don't have to do jack for me. He don't have to do nothing. I just love him. Because he first loved me. 
See? He first loved me, really loved me. So I love him. Really love him. More than my family. More than my life. Hey? Right? I count not my life dear to me for his name's sake. Hey? Right? You can't mistreat a spiritual man. You can only bless him and treat him. Because blessed, blessed are you when you're persecuted for doing the right thing. Blessed. You're always blessed. You're blessed coming in. You're blessed going out. In him. You go in the door and you come out the door. You're blessed. And the leaves of the trees would clap their hands. <laughs> oh dear. So rejoice in the Lord always. Hey? And again I say rejoice. And don't forget to pass that scripture on. It's vital. John 14, 21 to 24. And tell the love me, love my dog, uh, love, love me do. Tell the love, love me do crew. Have a read of that. You want to know if God loves you? Do you really want to know? You read that and then ask your conscience. John 14, 21 to 24. Yeah? Well, I'll leave it there and we'll press on with another lovely day. Glorious weather, good good weather for a ride today. And uh, we'll just see what Father will do today. But remember, there's no plans, there's no visions and nothing because you know why? Because you've been born. You're the property of Jesus. What a cheek. I'm the property of Jesus, but I got my vision. I got my plan. What? You got no choice, fella. You got no choice, lady. You're his property. And there's only one plan, and that's his plan for you. Not your plan. What's your vision? What's your plan, Paul? You're going to build... Yeah. Going to build a uh, synagogue or, you know... Uh, going to grow your church? Oh, that sort of talk makes me sick to my stomach. There's no scripture that says you're going to grow your church. Or the only scripture that says about the church is Jesus is going to build his church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Full stop, period. What's your vision? What, what's your plan? Don't forget to think positive. You can keep all that garbage. I don't need that deceiving spirits. I'll just choose to speak as the oracles of God and minister with the ability he's given me, not a Bible college. I minister with the ability he's given me for 37 and a half years and the things that I've seen happen and the things that I've seen and heard, I couldn't put them in a book with 20,000 pages. <laughs> and that would be in minute print. It'd just blow you away with your take-home pay. So have a great day, dear listeners. Go in the strength of the Lord. Don't go in your own strength because you'll run out of strength. End up shipwrecked. And everyone said, Amen. Thank you, Jesus.